Okay, today we're going to look at some more biological theories, again in the subcategory of genetic theories, and this PowerPoint is going to look at Jacobs's XYY syndrome. We're going to evaluate its effectiveness, and we're also going to look at how the syndrome has informed policy development. So, as I've stated in my previous PowerPoints, biological theories of criminality are trying to show that criminals are biologically different from non-criminals, and it's this difference that causes them to commit crime. Um, and so we're going to look today at a genetic theory linked to Jacob's XYY theory. And let's not forget genetic theories claim that criminality is inborn. It's passed down genetically from parent to child through the genes. So let's look at Jacobs's XYY theory. Start with a brief introduction. Patricia Ann Jacobs, she's a Scottish geneticist. And in 1965, Jacobs et al. published the work Aggressive Behaviour, Mental Subnormality and the XYY Male. And what this work did is what it suggested that some crime might be attributable to chromosomal abnormality. Now, chromosomes are structures of the cell nuclei that carry all the genetic information that we inherit from our parents. We look like our parents in one way or another because we've, their genes have been passed down to us. Jacobs' theory is that criminality is caused or can be caused by a chromosomal abnormality. So although this syndrome was first recorded in 1961, Jacobs' work was the seminal work on this, and so therefore this XYY syndrome is often referred to as Jacobs' syndrome. And for those of you that are watching on YouTube, um, there's a link here to a very good little snapshot explaining this. Um, you'll have to just copy down the link, but a good little one, my students, you can just click on the link for the PowerPoint that I've sent you. Well worth a watch that. So let's refresh. Jacobs is saying that an abnormality of the sex chromosomes is a possible genetic cause of criminality. Now we know that the chromosomes are all the genetic information that we inherit from our parents, so we, they carry all that genetic information. And we normally have 46 chromosomes that are arranged in 23 pairs. We inherit half of each pair from each parent, 23 from the mother, 23 from the father. And one pair of chromosomes consists of our sex chromosomes, and they determine whether we're male or we're female. Uh, this should be basically back to GCSE biology. I'm hoping that you know all this, but if you're doing A-level criminology, maybe you've forgotten it. Who knows? So we're either going to have two X chromosomes, so an X from one parent or an X from another parent, in which case you'll be female. So two X chromosomes, you're female. Or you get an X chromosome from the mother and a Y from the father, in which case you turn out to be male. Now, sometimes there are abnormalities, and one abnormality is that some people have an extra Y, so have an extra male chromosome. So these are known, this is known as XYY syndrome, and it's been labelled super male syndrome. So males with XYY have 47 chromosomes. So as you can see, we've got all the chromosomes here, and behind the picture of me will be... Uh, <laughs> number 23, which has got one X and two Ys. If you're watching the PowerPoint without my face on it, you'll be fine, it's there. But if you look on the backdrop of all my slides, you'll be able to see that 40, uh, 23rd chromosome with the X, Y, Y sitting behind all of them. So, obviously X, Y, Y syndrome is only gonna affect males because they're the only ones with the Y chromosome. So females can't have a Y chromosome, so males have to, uh, the syndrome can only affect males. And it's estimated to occur in about one in a thousand live births. So one in a thousand males might be XYY. Uh, and there are some things that may point out XYY males. Usually they're uh, higher than average. They're usually very tall, so six foot three average height. Uh, many will experience acne during adolescence. 
Some have learning disabilities such as speech delays or language problems are the most common. Uh, they've been reported in about half of cases of XYY. Um, intelligence is usually in the low to normal range, although IQ is on average uh, 10 to 15 points lower than any siblings the XYY male may have. And in some cases, affected individuals develop behavioural problems such as an explosive temper, hyperactivity, impulsivity, defiant actions, or in some cases, antisocial behaviour. Now you can see now why there might be this link to criminality when you look at these sort of behavioural problems. And also, there's a higher rate of attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder amongst XYY males and a small increased risk of having an autism spectrum disorder. So those are some of the um, things that XYY males may demonstrate. So what about Jacobs's research? Well, she and her colleagues conducted a study of inmates in a Scottish maximum security hospital in 1965. They tested for the chromosome. Um, the subjects of this study were defined as mentally subnormal, so there were male patients who were dangerous, violent or had criminal tendencies. And what Jacobs et al found was that 1 in 28, about 3.6% of these subjects were XYY. Now that doesn't seem that statistic, uh, that significant, but we've got to remember that XYY occurs in 1 in 1000 in the normal population. So it's a major statistical difference. And this high rate seems to suggest that XYY could be linked to increased violent or antisocial behavior. So XYY men may be more aggressive and more prone to violence than males with that single Y chromosome. And certainly, some studies have shown this. For instance, Price and Watmore found that XYY males were immature and unstable and had a strong tendency to commit seemingly motiveless property crimes. But you need to be a bit careful about XYY because certainly when it came about in the 1960s, it became a very common uh, defence used in courts. Uh, XYY males featured in several celebrated criminal cases. So this guy here, Richard Speck, who systematically raped, tortured and murdered eight student nurses in a Chicago hospital, uh, his defence used the fact that he was XYY, in other words, my chromosomes made me do it, as an excuse for his crime. The only problem was that Speck wasn't XYY, he was a normal XY male but that didn't stop the uh, lawyers from attempting to get him off using the XYY defence. So let's evaluate Jacobs's XYY. So what are the strengths? Well, the research in 1965 did find that XYY males were overrepresented in the prison population. So it definitely shows a link to criminality. And Adler et al in 20, 2007 found that it's possible that aggressive and violent behaviour is at least partly determined by genetic factors. And Price and Watmore found some links between the syndrome and property crime. So it's clear that there is a link here. However, let's look at the weaknesses. It's not supported by all research, the fact that XYY is linked to criminal behaviour. For instance, Mednick concluded after researching criminal records of Danish men that XYY men are no more likely to commit crimes of violence than XY men. He couldn't find a correlation. So this research by Mednick questions Jacobs's XYY theory and suggests that we need to look elsewhere for an accurate explanation of criminality. And let's also think about the symptoms of XYY. XYY males are tall and well built, so they fit that stereotype of violent offenders. And you could argue that they get labelled as such by the courts, so are more likely to get a prison sentence. So as a result, XYY males are overrepresented in the prison population. So that might be the case why they're there, not the fact that they've got XYY. So this overstates the importance of the syndrome as a possible cause of crime. 
And of course, X, Y, Y is very much a limited explanation. Not all males with X, Y, Y are aggressive. There's not a 100% concordance rate. They're not all violent and have criminal tendencies. And in addition, not all violent criminals are X, Y, Y. So again, the theory is limited as a useful explanation of criminality. And also, X, Y, Y males may be overrepresented in the prison population because they have low intelligence, means they're more likely to get caught. So samples drawn from prisoners, therefore, are skewed because the ones that got away aren't featuring in the sample. We don't know whether they're XYY or not. Probably only XY, which would skew the statistics further towards the norm. So that leads us on to the final part of this presentation, which how, we, how does it inform policy development? Well, it informs it in a very general way. Um, so I suppose it will have a role in offender profiling. Um, so that that has developed, you know, that will have, Jacobs will have an influence on offender profiling to some extent. And of course, like all biological theories, um, it will be have a link around the death penalty because if you believe that it, your crime is caused by genetics, then that can't be cured, and there's little point in trying to rehabilitate. So death penalty is cheaper and saves money. I hope you found that presentation interesting, and I will see you soon.